Good morning. Good morning. Maybe seated. I'm glad to see that you changed your clocks. <laughs> and I hope you also changed the batteries on your smoke detectors as well, because it is time. Isn't that right, my sister? That's right. Did a little public service announcement while we were there. We're glad to have all of you here this Lord's Day. Uh, I have a few announcements that I'd like to share with you. Uh, our Lent services tonight, uh, we are having supper at about 545. And uh, the uh, service starts about 630. And Angela's going to be preaching tonight. So we hope that you will be here tonight to hear Angela preach. Next week is the youth night. Uh, so we'll have that. And of course, on Palm Sunday, uh, Reverend Robert Dees will be here for us. Uh, not in the bulletin th this week, but our men's club, our United Methodist Men, is meeting tomorrow night at 6 uh, in the fellowship hall. You also have an offering for the uh, uh, envelope in your, in your bulletin about the UMCOR offering. Many of you know we do, bullet, we do uh, special offerings for disasters throughout uh, the year, you know, from floods and different things like that. This offering is for, to help cover some of the operational activities for UMCOR. Uh, that and our apportionment dollars help that. So if you can help with your offering, that'd be great for UMCOR today. Uh, our One Call uh, box, if you've got your sheet for the One Call Now, it is on the uh, chest right as you go out the front door. You moved it? Oh, she moved it over to the side, to the left. To your, yeah, as you're coming into your right, to the left over there, okay? Uh, Easter egg hunt uh, at Bernie Hope Center. You can see something a little bit about that in the bulletin uh, as well. That's coming up on Palm Sunday. Charge conference. We've got a charge conference, special call charge conference to receive the uh, Edwards request uh, officially. So we'll do that on March 27th. As part of our church council meeting. Kick and Kick Jr. are meeting tonight, as well as our youth right before our Lent services, and all that starts at 5. We've got a lot going on. Too much? No, not enough, never. We're glad to have you here with us. We're glad that you are here, and we invite you to stand and greet one another. In the name of the Lord. Friends, I invite you to pray with me as we offer our invocation. Dear Lord, be upon us as we worship, as we seek to worship you in spirit and in truth. May all that happens in this place be to your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we'll continue with At the Cross.
may be seated. Our scripture reading for this morning comes from John's Gospel. And part of it is a verse that many people have heard uh, many times. And it's in the context of the reading for today. It's John chapter 3. And we're going to be reading verses 14 through 21. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent, serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of this, the holy word of our Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, we pray that you will grant us your strength and wisdom as we seek to do your will and your way. Open our ears. Open my mouth. That your spirit may live in this place, in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. I can remember the guy with the rainbow colored Afro wig in the 1970s and 1980s. He was at many major sporting events on national television. The World Series, PGA Championships, NFL playoff games. And he'd wear that, that multicolored rainbow wig and you could spot him in the crowd. The camera would all, almost automatically be drawn to him. And when the camera was there, he would raise a sign that said, John 3.16. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Now, this man's crusade was an interesting one. And John 3.16 and his popularity and his efforts reflect what many of us have come to believe about this most popular verse in, of the Bible. Sometimes you may see the verse or just the scripture reference, John 3.16, on a bumper sticker or on jewelry or a t-shirt. Why is this verse so famous, so popular? What is there about that verse that captivates our attention? Maybe because, maybe because it's so cogent. It's a, it's a fitting summary of life in Christ. But you know, for all of that, sometimes it feels that the verse is so well-worn. It reminds me of a boulder embedded in a mountain stream that has become worn down to the size of a pebble by the relentless stream of time and use. So worn and smooth and familiar that no part of it really catches our attention anymore. 
John 3.16 has become a piece of furniture in the attic of our collective memory. It is there, full of connection to the times that we used it sometimes before, when we heard it, when we said it by heart, but it soon goes back into that attic, that memory bank. Others of us hear the title, John 3.16, and it's like a meaningful lyric in an old song. It still speaks to us. It speaks to us of what we believe about God, about what we believe about human beings, and what it means to be a follower of God. Some love a particular part of the verse because it speaks to them. It speaks to what they think about God, about what it means to be saved in Christ. Some of us favor the first part or the last part of the verse with the so that in the middle. The so that is kind of the hinge for the verse. Some favor and are attached to the first part that says, for God so loved the world. We love that part because we hold on tightly to the grace of God, the amazing grace of God that speaks to us, that meets us where we are, long before we know it, long before we understand it, that the grace of God is there. That's our understanding of salvation, that it comes from God and it's not something we earn. In fact, we're lost without it. We like that part of the verse because we know that we could not even believe without grace. That God gives us the grace that we need to believe in Him. Some of us like that first part. Some of us like the last part of the verse. After the so that. The part that says, believing lest we perish. We believe that grace is good, that the love of God is good, it's great. But until we respond to it, until we act upon it, God's grace is like an unopened present under a tree a few days after the Christmas season. We have to accept it. We have to believe in order to be in full relationship with God. Of course, we know that belief isn't about checking off a box in our mind. It's more than just intellectual assent. It is believing is living out what we think and what we understand about God. It's living it out every day and in every way. Belief is how we talk and walk through life and the choices that we make. The tragedy of the popularity of this verse is that we tend to isolate it. And when we do, we thereby freeze it with what we believe about salvation and the life in Christ. It becomes a mere shortcut. John 3, 16. And when we do that, we take the verse out of its context. We take it out of the Bible. We take it out of the Gospel of John. We remove it from that conversation that Jesus is having with Nicodemus. That's where the scripture comes from. It's, it's part of a conversation that Jesus is having with Nicodemus. Nicodemus is a teacher of the law. He's a Pharisee. He was a man struggling to understand what Jesus was talking about. He was trying to plumb the depths of the mystery to learn and grow in God through Jesus Christ. And it didn't happen by taking a shortcut. It didn't happen by just quoting a scripture verse. It takes a while for Nicodemus to figure things out, to see grace and to see his part in believing throughout his life. In fact, it takes most of the rest of the Gospel of John. We don't hear from Nicodemus again until late after the crucifixion. 
when he and Joseph of Arimathea take the body of Jesus to the tomb. We have a tendency to take John 3.16 and isolate it. We make it a spiritual shortcut to a final answer. It's like isolating a note in a Mozart symphony and trying to claim that that solitary note is the final understanding of Mozart's symphony. And when we do that, we make the tendency, we have the tendency to make this verse reflect what we want it to be. We might want it to be a formula or a recipe for religious life as a Christian. We have a recipe to mix in a little bit of grace and add some faith and works and voila. You have everything you need. An algorithm of salvation. But John 3.16 is a beautiful verse. And it need not be merely a security passport or just epitomize a theological debate between about salvation through grace or works. John 3.16 speaks to the mystery of God's grace and the human response of believing. Almost like partners in a dance. I think of the relationship between God's grace and human response is like the couple's ice dancing at the Olympics. You saw them a few weeks ago at the Winter Games, you know what I'm talking about. A couple skates together and they dance, as if you will, on a floor of ice. And each partner has certain steps, certain maneuvers to master on their own as well as the things they must do together as a team. The throws and the catches, the lifts, and how they synchronize their movements to be mirror images of one another. It is, at its best, a delicate balance of athleticism and choreography. It is a beautiful interplay of grace and discipline. Of course, the performance that we see at the Olympics doesn't show the years of practice that that couple had to make to get there. But on that night, we see the partners together moving gracefully across the ice. The grace of God and our faithful response in John 3.16 is that kind of dance. Each powerful in its own right but salvation and eternal life will not be possible without grace and faithful response working together. Grace and belief offered fully and completely to the other is a beautiful dance that takes time and patience and trust to master. And no, God's grace and our response are not equal partners but they make each other shine in holy love. John 3.16 is not a dance of theology, just a dance of theology and how we see God's grace in our human response. It's also an invitation to see that our relationship with God is a dance as well. God leads and we follow. Sometimes we don't know the next steps that God will show us. And that's the mystery of our faith. We follow along even if we're not sure where God is leading. And you know what? We may even fall on the ice. But God helps us up. The more we dance, the deeper the relationship we go with God the stronger we get and still deeper in the mystery of our faith we go, deeper in our understanding of grace, deeper in our understanding of our response and how we live. 
We learn to dance better as we grow in that relationship with God. I can remember in high school being assigned the novels for class reading. Did y'all have those? Like I had, I think, ninth grade, Lost Horizon, Weathering Heights, and The Scarlet Letter. Did y'all have to do that? I also remember going down to the local drugstore and buying the Cliff's Notes for each one of those books. I wanted to get a synopsis of the story so I wouldn't have to do all that reading of that novel. And those yellow books, they were gold. They could help, they could have helped my understanding with character and plot analysis. But all I really cared about was the synopsis. I wanted the synopsis so that I could answer a question in class or write a paper. And I missed out in high school opportunities and invitations for a deeper understanding of some of the great works in literature that reading them would have offered me. John 3.16 is not a Cliff Notes version of the Bible. It's not a Cliff Notes version of the faith or our relationship with God. It's not meant to freeze us in theological frameworks that stunt our growth as persons of faith. That's not what John 3.16 is. John 3.16 is an invitation to dance. To grow into the mystery of God. To grow in our relationship with Christ Jesus. So now's the time that we take John 3, 6, the John 3.16 pebble out of the stream of public overuse. It's time that we take it out of the attic of our minds as an easy answer and a shortcut to faith. It's time that we claim John 3.16 as Nicodemus did. As an invitation to start on an ongoing journey a growing, ever-growing relationship with Christ Jesus. John 3.16 is an invitation to dance with God, to move alongside the Savior in all aspects of our living, in the changing tempo and rhythm of the music of life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
As a response to the word of God proclaimed among us, let us recite the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. As Joseph said, you all set your alarms right, <laughs> and we are glad to see you this morning. As we prepare to go to God in prayer, there are uh, several prayer requests that we ask you to remember not just today as we pray together, but that you remember throughout the week. Um, this past Thursday, we held the service of death and resurrection for Dick Booth and ask that you continue to keep Gail and their family in your prayers during this season of grief. We also um, ask for special prayers for a five-year-old in our Trinity Day School. Her name is Cecilia, and Cecilia has been in the hospital with encephalitis. Um, and it's been kind of touch and go for a while, but she is making some improvements, but it's going to be a long recovery. and so. Please keep Cecilia and her parents in your prayers, um, not just today, but, but in continuation. We will be celebrating here at Trinity the birth of Gloria, who Christina Kinley, who is our church secretary, she has been waiting very patiently for this little girl to arrive, and there's no sign of her yet, but um, we are hoping that when that time comes, that it will be a very healthy pregnancy. We're going to miss her while she's out on maternity leave. Um, but we wish God's blessing upon her family and especially Gloria. Many of you have heard the word Salkahatchee, and many of you know what Salkahatchee is, and some of you may not. Salkahatchee is a summer mission for 14 year olds and up. Um, and when I say up, I mean we've had 80-year-olds that have been out there with us. And it is a, a mission that rebuilds homes uh, so that homes may be safer, warmer, and drier. Uh, yesterday, we were in Irmo at Union celebrating 40 years of Sakahatchee. All of the homes that have been changed, all of the lives that have been changed, um, and it was a very exciting and, and moving day as we worshiped together and as we shared together. But we ask that you keep Sakahachi in your prayers and that if God leads you to participate in this ministry, there are many ways from food to prayers to construction. Um, we ask that you ask God to lead you in how you can be a part of this ministry. And we also offer a special prayer for our the Sumter Women's Music Club, as they will be presenting a uh, sacred music afternoon of sacred music at Holy Comfort at 3 p.m. today. We will keep you in our prayers. Let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, we have gathered together in your name as an act of faith, believing that you are not only among us, but that you love us. And sometimes it's hard to recognize that love or see your mercy and feel your presence, but we know that it is always there. Help us today as we worship you. Help us to be transparent to your grace as you reveal yourself to each of us. You created, in, uh, you created in Christ Jesus good works. And you created us 
in Christ Jesus for the same. Help us remember the great work that Christ accomplished for us, which no other person could perform. Help us confess with gladness that by grace we have been saved. Help those who profess faith in Christ to do good in the world, following the way of life you have prepared for those who believe in him. And when we feel that we've lost direction as a people or even as a person, help us to remember your presence in our wilderness journeys. Your children walk by your light, doing what is true. Yet salvation is not earned by good works, but through trust in your grace. Rid our hearts of arrogance that the world may be drawn to your truth by our humble witness. Your steadfast love and wonderful works have spared us of troubles known and unknown because of your love for us. Your reign encompasses all the earth, even though nations may rebel against your justice. Save the nations from the wrath of their disobedience. Help them to dwell in peace and promote the common good. You love us even when we are most unlovable, lost, and afraid. And we are forever grateful. You hear the cry of all those whom you love with special needs, known to us as family and friends the sick and the afflicted, the lonely and the oppressed. Lord, save them from their distress. Heal them of their illness or heartbreak. Equip us to be comfort and deliver them from the destructive power of suffering. We especially lift before you today Cecilia and her family, and the Booth family. As we've gathered here this day to celebrate the good news that you've given to the world, remind us that it is our purpose to offer that good news to others, not only in words, but in deeds of love and mercy, peace and justice. And as we've offered names of people in situations which have been heavy on our hearts for your healing mercies, remind us also that we stand in need of that same healing love. Lord, for the person who believes they need this prayer the most, and Lord, the person who believes they need this prayer the least, cover us all. Be with us during this season of Lent. Give our hearts of great joy and courage to serve you all our days. O oh God, in Jesus Christ, you have shown your love for the world. Receive our prayers. Grant us what we need. Save us from ourselves and bring us to everlasting life. We love you and we, we offer this our prayer as we also pray the prayer that your son taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as we prepare to continue in our worship, I'll turn it over. Will our ushers please come forward for the dedication of our tithes and offerings.
Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for all that you have given. We pray now, Lord, that these gifts will be used to further your kingdom in this place and around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. been invited to dance and you may not dance too well or you don't think you do but God guides you in this dance of life God guides you with grace and peace God guides you with love and comfort God invites you to dance through life as God's part Go now, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and dance, and remember who you are. Amen. <laughs>